Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. We are getting so close to Christmas and in today's video, I am going to be testing out a bunch of really fun and festive holiday options. Last year I made a video similar to this with Christmas brunch recipes and this year since I'm hosting Christmas at my house, a lot of these are appetizers. Um, and one dessert, but I love just finding new and fun recipes to try out year after year, but I do like to test some of them out ahead of time. There's nothing worse than just having a major fail on the day of. This is my Christmas 2022 menu. The first thing we are going to be making is a cheese and bacon Christmas tree. This one is going to look so cute and it sounds like it's going to taste amazing as well. The next thing are cranberry and brie phyllo crackers like those little Christmas crackers is what they're going to look like you'll notice that the theme of these recipes is there are things that not only taste good but also look like Christmas as well so the next thing is a charcuterie tree and if you saw my brunch video last year then you might remember the donut hole tree where we used the um, cone and put a whole bunch of donut holes around it it looked so beautiful but but if you don't have a lot of people who love to eat donuts, it doesn't get eaten that much. So I'm doing a little variation of that this year. Everyone who's coming absolutely loves charcuterie boards. I mean, who doesn't? So we're going to be making a charcuterie tree and seeing how that comes out. And for the dessert, I'm making a melted snowman bark, which just looked absolutely adorable. So let's go ahead and get started. We are making the cheese and bacon Christmas tree first because it does need some refrigeration time. For the cheese mixture itself, you will need two eight ounce containers of cream cheese, white cheddar cheese, five cups, about a quarter cup of chopped sweet onion, Worcestershire sauce, and eight slices of bacon. I am cheating and using bacon bits. I forgot to mention that I will leave all of the links to the full recipes in today's video down below. Right now I'm using my KitchenAid to blend all the ingredients together for our cheese mixture. Here is the cheese ball mixture, already smelling amazing. For this next part, you're going to want to use the serving tray that you plan on serving the Christmas tree on. I'm using this wooden tray from Hearth and Hand that I love. I plan on putting the tree in the middle and then having crackers and vegetables on either side. You are going to need one pretzel rod for this. This is going to be the um, thing that kind of holds your tree up. And then I am also using gloves. The recipe said to start with a quarter of the cheese mixture to form the base. It had a consistency that was really easy to work with and the gloves made the process a lot less messy. Now I'm chopping up a bunch of parsley pretty fine and then this is going to go all over the tree giving it that green Christmas tree color.
Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I love HelloFresh, especially this time of year, whether you're hosting for the holidays or just during those busy weeknights, I can always count on HelloFresh for fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. And aside from saving time and money, HelloFresh helps me add more variety in our weeknight meals, whereas before I would find myself alternating between the same few recipes week after week. Today I'm making the roasted garlic and zucchini flatbread with Italian chicken sausage and I made the most delicious white sauce for the base. This was something I would have never thought to make on my own, but my husband and I absolutely loved it and are inspired to incorporate more flatbread recipes into our weeknight meals. HelloFresh even offers quick and easy options like their 20 minute meals and easy cleanup dishes, which are still big on flavor but easy on the effort. So whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at HelloFresh Market. From their quick breakfast options to charcuterie boards and desserts, it's never been easier to prep for a party or fill your pantry. Go to HelloFresh.com and use my code JessicaGiffen18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, JessicaGiffen18 for 18 free meals and free shipping. And then for some decorations and added flavor. I'm using sliced almonds and pomegranate seeds. I love the texture of pomegranate seeds and how they kind of pop in your mouth. And I also thought that the little bit of sweetness would taste really good with the salty cheese mixture. And for the star on top of the tree, I'm using star fruit. I'm not sure if this is available everywhere, but I thought it would just be the perfect finishing touch to our tree. All right, here is the bacon cheese Christmas tree. I love how this turned out. The star fruit on top is so perfect. You could also use a block of cheese and a star cookie cutter if you can't find a star fruit. And you can be so creative with what you use on the cheese ball. I saw some recipes that called for grape tomatoes. If you wanted to use those in place of the pomegranate, you could cut up some bell peppers and use that. So I just thought these would be very easy for people to eat um, size wise. And I just thought they would taste good as well. Okay. So so onto the cranberry and brie phyllo crackers. For this, you will need this phyllo dough, which is in the freezer section, some cranberry sauce, butter, sliced almonds, rosemary for topping, and then French brie. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in here now. This recipe as the cute Christmas crackers was a total fail, as you will see, and I will explain, but I do come up with an idea on how to still make these because the taste was totally there. It was so delicious and had all of that yummy holiday flavor, so stay tuned. Okay, so honest thoughts about this recipe as I'm sitting here making it. The brie is very sticky and the individual phyllo dough is so fragile. And then I feel like the sliced almonds on top of it just pierce it even more. I mean, it's already fragile and then that just kind of guarantees that they tear. This is the perfect example of why I like to make these recipes in advance because I would be so annoyed and stressed if I was making these for an appetizer on Christmas because they are just a lot of work. I do hope they taste good though. Okay, here they are ready to go in the oven. I was thinking as I was making the last of these that one, I'm glad I didn't have to make any more because I did not enjoy this process. But when I was at the store, they have frozen phyllo cups. So I think we could just put the same 
cheese and cranberry and almond mixture inside one of the pre-made cups and it would just be so much easier. Okay, so this recipe was a big fail. The cheese completely leaked out. Um, I really don't know what I could have done better. If you guys have any other ideas, let me know. Um, I think there are two that are salvageable, so I still want to try them because like I said, there are the Philo already made cups that I could just add the same filling to, so I think that's what I will end up doing this year. And again, thank goodness I tried this recipe out ahead of time. We have to test out the Philo dough crackers to see if that mess was even worth doing it the other way, so here we go. The flavors in this thing are all there. They're so holiday. The rosemary on top, I just feel like rosemary is a very holiday flavor. So it was cranberry, the brie, and also the phyllo dough is just light and it's so good. So my synopsis is I'm definitely gonna be making it with the phyllo cups, doing the same thing. Just unfortunately, we're not gonna have the cute cracker shapes, but it's definitely not worth the effort. Okay, so on to something a little bit more safe and one that I'm really excited to put together, and that is my charcuterie tree. So this is the base of the tree. It's this craft foam, and you can get it at any craft supply store. I got mine from Hobby Lobby, and the size is 4.75 inches by 17.9. So I think it's just like one of the medium to large sizes. And I am gonna unwrap it from that wrapper and wrap it in plastic wrap. And then for the actual charcuterie, I have spinach. And I plan on putting each piece on top of the spinach and using a toothpick to insert it into the foam, if that makes sense. I have two different types of cheese here that I pre-chopped the night before. That's something that I really liked about this recipe is that it's really easy to prep everything and then I think it'll be pretty simple to put together. I have different types of meat here, some rosemary, some little baby tomatoes, two different types of olives and little cucumbers that I pre-chopped last night and then toothpicks. I had so many comments on my donut tree last year that I should have wrapped it first and I totally agree. So that's the first thing we're doing this year and I recommend getting the press and seal kind. I didn't need to use any kind of tape or anything to hold it in place. I had a cute planter that I'm going to put this in when it's done just to make it look a little fancier and give it some more height. But alternatively, if this planter didn't fit, I was planning on putting it on a round cake stand with some crackers or even some of the leftover charcuterie items around the base. I decided to start with the tomatoes first, originally thinking that they would be the biggest item, which they turned out not to be, so I don't really think there's any one that you should necessarily start with first, and there's endless ways that you could go about applying these, but I just decided to make a little swirl up and around the tree and then just follow that pattern with all of the charcuterie items that I'm using. You'll see for the meat that I applied it in two ways. I started with this little flower and then towards the end, I decided to roll them up and add it that way. Again, totally optional, but I found that rolling it was the easier and faster method. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, thy leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here, but also when it's cold and drear. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. Okay, so I am obsessed with this already. It's turning out so cute, and I love that it's gonna be more 
practical. I feel like people are much more likely to go towards vegetables and cheeses and things like that than a donut tree. So loving how it's coming out so far. One thing I want to say is I forgot in some places to add the spinach in the back, but it really does help. So I will continue using them. And I did just pinch the stem off. And yeah, I just wanted to do a little check-in so far. I'm loving how it turns out. It smells so good. My leaves are so unchanging. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Such pleasure do you bring me. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Such pleasure do you we have the charcuterie tree i just put another piece of the star fruit on top and this was so much fun to put together i think it will be such a hit along with a little cheese tree over here i am so excited for people to see this it's such a conversation piece and just a really fun way to switch up the usual charcuterie board which let's be honest everybody eats and everybody loves and finally, this is going to be absolutely adorable. It's the Melted Snowman Bark. For this, you're going to need melting chocolate. I got this from Hobby Lobby. Mini Reese's. And then for the arms, little pretzel sticks. And then these eyes you can find just at any local grocery store. I believe I saw them at Hobby Lobby as well in their little baking aisle. But those are the eyes. And then for the buttons, I just got a bunch of these round um, sprinkles. You're going to start by melting your chocolate. I'm using two bags for one cookie sheet. These were so much fun to make. I saved the other two bags so I could make more of them with my kids. I know they will love making these. When the chocolate is almost dry, I used a knife and scored around where I wanted my snowman to separate. And then when they were totally dry, about a half hour or so later, they separated really nicely. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some holiday recipe ideas. I'm going to resume my videos starting January 1st with some after Christmas decorating inspiration. I hope you all have an amazing holiday and as always, thank you so much for your support.